Bienvenidos. Welcome to the Learn Spanish con Salsa Podcast, the show for Spanish learners that love music, travel, and culture. Close your grammar textbooks, shut down the language apps, and open your ears to how Spanish is spoken in the real world. Let us show you how to go from beginner to bilingual. Here is your host, certified language coach, Tamara Marie. Welcome to episode nine of the Learn Spanish con Salsa podcast. In this episode, we're going to chat with Cassia again. You may remember from the previous episode where we talked about the Dominican Spanish accent. And if you didn't hear that episode, go back and check out LearnSpanishConSalsa.com forward slash Dominican Spanish. And in that episode, we talk all about the accent of the Dominican Republic and some of the differences between sort of how Dominicans speak and how you may have heard so-called neutral Spanish, which I don't believe in, but that's another story. What you may have heard in, you know, your classroom or what you may have seen in a Spanish course, we talk a lot about the differences between that type of Spanish and the way that people actually speak Spanish in the Dominican Republic. So in this episode, we're going to pick back up with that conversation and we're going to actually talk about some Dominican Spanish words and expressions. So it's not just the accent that makes Dominican Spanish unique. There's also a ton of different words and expressions that you'll only hear in the DR. So Cassia is joining me today and we're going to talk all about that in this episode. So, hola, Kesia, ¿cómo estás? Hola, Tamara, muy bien, estoy muy bien por aquí, ¿y tú? Muy bien, como siempre. Let's start with one of the most common words that you hear in the Dominican Republic. Something that when you hear it, you know right away that that person is Dominican. It's a typical greeting from DR, que lo que. Que lo que, and what does que lo que mean? It means, how are you? Like, ¿cómo estás? Okay. Or it can also be something like, what's up? Like, ¿qué pasa? You know? Okay. So we normally, when we see somebody, a friend or a family member, we say, hey, ¿qué lo que? ¿Cuánto tiempo? You know, like saying, hey, how are you? It's been a while. <laughs> All right. One of my stories I usually tell is one of the first times that I visited the Dominican Republic. Somebody actually said that to me and I was so confused because he's like, Ay, Tamara, que lo que? And I was looking like, trying to translate like, what? That what? What? The witch? Like, I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> I sort of, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, it's like they don't teach that in any of the courses. Like, I've, that's not a greeting that I heard. I sort of figured it out after I heard it a couple of times, but it was still one of those things that I was not prepared for just getting off the plane in Santo Domingo and hearing, ay, que lo que? And I'm like, huh? <laughs> I don't know. What's the proper response to that? So what is the proper response? So if someone says to you, que lo que? How do you respond? I would say, bien. Bien, or tranquila, or it depends, like, if you feel sad, ay, estoy mal, estoy mal, estoy cansada, you know, it all depends on how you feel. But you would just reply with a short answer, like, one word answer, yeah. Okay, so it's basically like, you know, someone says, como estas? So if they say, que lo que, you respond the same way you would to, como estas? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I know also there's a text abbreviation for que lo que too, isn't there? If someone texts you que lo que, how would that look? Yeah, we will spell it K and then space L-O, you know, like lo and then K again. Yes. I don't know why, because if you read it in Spanish, the letter K will sound like ka, you know, right. so it will be ka lo ka, but it, <laughs> it actually means que lo que. I guess it's just a shorter way or lazy way to write it. <laughs> yeah, so it's like the English letter K. So it's like the English letter K, lo, and then the English letter K for short, instead of writing out Q-U-E, how it would be spelled in Spanish, just using the English letter for short. Yeah. <laughs> so if you get a text from one of your Dominican friends and you're wondering, what does that mean? Is it an equation? <laughs> what is that? It just means, <laughs> como estas? Okay. Okay. So we've got our first Dominican Spanish word. We've got our greeting. So we know how to respond to a greeting. So what's another word in the Dominican Republic that's distinctly or uniquely Dominicano? It's the word 
Vaina. Vaina. Ah, this is the one we talked about a little bit in our last conversation. I know when I hear someone that uses that word a lot, I know right away that I'm listening to a Dominican. That's <laughs> so right. <laughs> explain a little bit about what is vaina. So basically, vaina is the same as cosa or thin, right? Mm -hmm. And you will use it for anything. <laughs> Para cualquier cosa. <laughs> we also use it when there's a problem. So, for example, your car doesn't start and you say, ay, que vaina, you know, like, oh, what a problem, or, or like, oh, God, again, you know? Uh -huh. So we would say, que vaina, with that attitude, like something's going wrong, you know? <laughs> but in general, it means cosa or thing. So anything, you could use it to say, oh, esa vaina está caliente, you know? Like, what's the vaina? I don't know, it could be... Uh, a car can be a pod, whatever, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like that thing is hot. It's very yeah. warm. <laughs> yeah. Give me some other examples of how you can use it. Because I know there's, I think vaina is like the most versatile word in Dominican Spanish. Like you can have a whole conversation, I think, <laughs> where that's the <laughs> subject, right? It could be the subject, it could be adjectives. So kind of give us oh, some yeah. more examples of how it can be used. You can say, me gusta esa vaina. Mm, esa vaina está muy bonita, you know, like mm -hmm. saying, oh, I like that thing, it's very pretty, you know, or uh, la vaina está difícil, hay que hacer mucha vaina para poder ganarse el ochelito, el dinero, you know, like life is difficult and you have to work hard and do a lot of things to make some money. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like you say, you can use Vaina in a conversation all the time to describe everything. And it's funny because you're not mentioning any subject or object, but we will understand each other. Like, we know what the Vaina is. Right. You know? <laughs> Some people might say, what Vaina? What, what? La vaina, la vaina, you know, la vaina. Yeah. <laughs> like esa vaina. With another vaina. Yeah. He's like, ya tu sabes, esa vaina. <laughs> esa vaina, yeah. <laughs> So I think it's interesting because it can be a thing, like a physical thing, or it can also be like a situation. Like you said, like you get in the car and it, it doesn't start. It's like, ah, que vaina. I think too, in some instances, the way I hear it used in English, I would actually translate it to the word crap, which is sort of like, you know, it's not necessarily a derogatory term, but it is kind of expressing, you know, that you have some frustration. It's like, what is this crap, right? Like, yes, esa vaina. It's like, if you say it like that, you're kind of saying, man, this crap is happening again. Like... So it's not necessarily, you know, there's another word for that, which I'm not going to mention that we also use in English, but it's not that, you know, it's not vulgar, but it does sometimes express a little bit of frustration. It's something that's an undesirable situation. So you can kind of use it in exasperation like that sometimes. So there's actually a really funny video on YouTube that talks all about the word vaina. It gives like a whole explanation, like different ways you can use it. It's actually pretty funny. So I'm actually going to link it in the show notes. But if you want a complete breakdown of that video, so I have a full transcript where you actually can understand everything that's being said and also the English translation of it, it's actually inside our Dominican Spanish 101 course. And you can get a free trial of that as well. And I'll talk about that a little bit later towards the end of the episode. But it is a really funny video if you want to watch and kind of get a sense of how that word is used um, every day by Dominicans. Okay. So we had uh, phrase one was que lo que. Number two we have is vaina. So what's our third Dominican Spanish word? Tato. Tato. Tato, yeah. It's supposed to be two words, but you know, as we cut words, like we explained before, it joins into one word and we say tato. It means está bien or okay. I've heard that in... I don't want to say neutral Spanish, but I've heard in other Spanish speaking countries, they have a full phrase that's similar to tato. It's like, está todo bien. Like three separate words, mm -hmm. like it's all good or is everything okay or everything is okay. You know, like if it's a question or a statement. So it's actually like this whole phrase that's been shortened into like one word. <laughs> right? That's right. <laughs> tato. <laughs> So give us some examples of how we might hear that used in the Dominican Republic. I don't know, like if I invite you somewhere, I say, hey, ¿quieres ir al cine esta noche? Then you will reply saying, Tato, vamos. You know, like, okay, está bien, vamos. Okay. 
<laughs> or if you say, oh, I finished that homework that you asked me to, I'll be like, oh, tato, gracias. You know, like, okay, everything's fine. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So it's like another way to say, está bien. Like, it's okay. Yes. Or everything's good. So you're kind of confirming, yep, that's good with me. So you're just going to say, tato. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow, that one really gets me because it's such a shortening that it doesn't even sound at all like the original words. So it's like no. you really have to know what people are talking about if you hear that one. That one I think is very extreme when it comes to the shortening and cutting of letters. So yeah. So yeah. I actually think many Dominicans think that this is one word, you know? Like if you will ask them <laughs> what it means, they'll be right. like Tato, you know, like, and they might even write it for you thinking that it's one word. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's another thing, too. Like, so in written communication, like texting, like some of these words can be super informal and they're not always, you know, spelled correctly. Like we talked about vaina. Like I've seen people spell that like B-A-I-N-A instead of B-A-I-N-A because in Spanish, the B and V, you know, have the same sound. But in English, they're two yeah. different, <laughs> two different sounds that I've seen, you know, native Spanish speakers write vaina with the de chica the B. So mm -hmm. it's been <laughs> really interesting when you try to write out some of these expressions and things that people say all the time. All right. So Tato. All right. So word number four. What's our fourth Dominican expression? It's the word heavy. heavy. And it's not heavy as in heavy in English. <laughs> okay. How would you spell <laughs> that? Different. Yeah, I would spell it J-E-V-I. Ah, okay. Heavy. Okay heavy yeah and it means being like something's cool or nice you know it's normally used for compliments so you want to say to your friend that her dress is pretty you say hi ese vestido si está heavy me gusta you know like oh that dress is so nice i like it it's used to compliment or like a guy it's attractive you're like oh ese muchacho se ve heavy you know oh, it looks okay. good or the girl you know oh ella es muy heavy it can also mean that she has a nice personality so you say oh ella es muy heavy she's friendly you know or nice mm -hmm. okay so it's a positive thing it's a positive compliment that you receive if someone says that you're heavy yes, so it is for the women out there if a Dominican guy says that you're heavy he's not calling you fat okay no <laughs> that's another word altogether <laughs> so not the English heavy so it's not an insult it's a compliment okay <laughs> so what is our next word Cassia it's pana pana okay and what does pana mean it means amigo or friend so you say oh mi pana Jose viene a visitarme. It's like, oh, my friend Jose is coming to visit me. And we actually use it, we combine it with a word in English that is fool. We say mi pana fool to say like he's my best friend. And let mi pana fool ese muchacho, you know, like, oh, that boy is my best friend. It's like saying in English, I think you guys say my bestie, you know, like that expression. Yeah. 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 So it will be the same. Like, oh, mi pana fool. Fool, I like that. So it's an English word. <laughs> it combines, <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> combines with another word that you only hear in the DR, right? Yeah. And uh, another question. So for my grammar nerds out there, because I know someone's thinking it. So pana ends with an A. So it sounds like a feminine word. So can you use it to describe a male or a female with the same ending? Yes. yes. Okay. So there's no pano. We wouldn't do that. No, no. That no. sounds it's weird. Pana okay. For masculine yes okay all right so let's move on to palabra numero seis word number six what do we have is the word chin chin okay what does that mean it means a little bit un poco will be proper spanish like un poco or un poquito you have to be careful because i have heard that this word is a cursing word in mexico oh okay all right <laughs> <laughs> but that's I important think, to know <laughs> yes yes I had an experience with it but yes Dominicanos oh no 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 you can't leave us hanging you have to tell us about your experience <laughs> you know I was gonna ask that what was your experience with this word I want to hear this oh no it's so embarrassing so I was in Mexico and I was at a place where they have like many different sweets like typical sweets from Mexico and I was trying everything but it was already too much so uh -huh. the guy is coming with a big piece for me to try it and I say no 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 un ching un ching solo un ching and he looked at me and he got so mad and he's like 
if you leave my store, you don't need to come with those words here. If you don't want it, you don't. Oh, no. Like, oh, what happened? So the friend from Mexico that was with me, she's like, oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm like, what did I say? And she didn't want it to explain to me. I was like, you need to tell me. I will keep saying it. I didn't know. You used the word cheap. I was like, it means a little, un poquito, you know? She's like, no, you don't use that word here. It was so embarrassing. But then the worst thing was that I couldn't control it. And after that, I wanted to say chin all the time. It's like I couldn't <laughs> say un poco or un poquito. <laughs> oh, God. Well, give us an idea of what it means in Mexican Spanish without, you know, I guess giving us the actual word. Kind of give us an idea of what it means. It's like the act of having sex. You know, um, like in a dirty way, I would say, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So he thought you were really insulting him. <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh, um, that's horrible. I'm sorry you had that experience. But, you know, that really, it's interesting because it shows, like, I think a lot of times as native English speakers, when we're learning Spanish, we get sort of embarrassed by those things. But they can happen in between different Spanish-speaking cultures as well because there are differences in the words that are used. So it's interesting that, you know, those experiences still happen. So, wow. Yeah. Okay. So we know that if we go to Mexico, we cannot use this word. <laughs> no, you have to say un poquito. Or okay. Un... <laughs> but if we're in the Dominican Republic and we hear someone saying it, or we want to try to use it ourselves, when can we use the word chin? So if you want just a little bit of something, let's say, oh, dame un chin de agua, por favor. Like, can I have some water or a little bit of water? Or you can even use it for things that are not things you can see or touch. For example, I can say, estoy un chin cansada. You know, like I'm a little bit tired or voy a llegar un chin tarde. It's like I'm going to get there a little late, you know. So you can use it for anything that means a little. Okay, so you can use it pretty much just like the word poco. Then mm -hmm. you can just substitute that with chin. Mm -hmm. So we've gone through six words so far. So I think we're at the end of our list. So what is the last Dominican Spanish word that we're going to look at today? It's allantar. Allantar. Okay, what does mm -hmm. that mean? It means presumir in proper Spanish, and in English you will say to pretend. So give us some examples of how we might hear that. Okay, so my mother-in-law is coming to visit, and I say, oh, tengo que allantar a mi suegra con una buena comida, you know? Like, I have to pretend that I am a good wife and cook a nice meal for her. <laughs> <laughs> and you actually use it to describe the person. So if I do that, then I become an ayantosa. No, yo soy una ayantosa. So it means that I pretend to be this person, but I'm not. <laughs> ah, so like, I think in English we have an expression for that. At least the way I've heard it said is like perpetrating a fraud. <laughs> it's like a long way to say, it. you know, like you're trying to put on an act, so to speak, you know? Yes. So yeah. yeah. So you're kind it's, of a, it's not illegal because you make it sound illegal, but it's not illegal. Right, uh, no, that's like something I don't know. And even that phrase that I just use is not kind of like a universal American thing. Um, I want to say I'm not sure where I even first heard it. It's probably a little old school at this point, <laughs> but it's something that we would say. And I'm from the East Coast of the U.S., so I'm kind of like, oh, they're perpetrating a fraud. It does make it sound like they're committing crime, but it really just means that they're, you know, we know that they're faking, like they're faking it. That's a better way to say it. Oh, okay. Like, okay. you know, we know that you're faking it, but like, that's a very specific phrase to like perpetrate yeah. the fraud. That's a little more slang, but yeah, faking it is probably a more like neutral way to say. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's how it is. So if I see that you're happy, but I know you just broke up with your boyfriend, I say, hey, no me allantes, you know, like don't put that fake face because I know you're sad, you know, we so use it a lot. I think Dominicanos are very allantoso in general. <laughs> <laughs> in a good way, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. We're always happy, even though life is not perfect here. Yeah, yeah. Always putting on a good face on things, even if things are bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we've learned quite a bit of Dominican Spanish today. So, all right, Cassia, so if you could just review, what are the seven Dominican Spanish words that we talked about in this episode? Okay, we just saw que lo que which is, how are you, or what's up? We also saw the word vaina, which is cosa, a thing, or it can also represent a problem, you know, like, oh, que vaina, like, oh, God. We also saw the word tato, which is, está bien, the word heavy, 
which is a compliment for nice or pretty. Also, the word pana, which is amigo or friend. The word ching, a little bit, un poco in proper Spanish. And to never and, use it in Mexico, we learned that. No, remember <laughs> that. And then the word ayantar, which is to pretend. So that's a pretty good list. We've learned some new words today. I hope that if you're listening, you found something in there that you didn't know before. And you can definitely at least be familiar with. Even We don't expect you to maybe go out and use these words, but maybe the next time you hear someone saying these words and you know that the speaker's from the Dominican Republic, you'll understand what's going on. I just want to say that these phrases and words, everyone uses it. But if you're talking to somebody in a formal environment, you want to refrain from using these words. So like if you are going to say hi to your boss or on a job interview or your grandmother, you know, you don't want to say, que lo que abuela, or que lo que jefe, you know, you want to keep it formal. All of these expressions are very common, but they are used at an informal environment or situations. Okay, and that's really important to know, right? To not sort of walk into a hotel, you know, and, and greet the person that, you know, it says, buen dia, and you go, ah, que lo que? <laughs> yeah, no, you don't want to yeah. do that. <laughs> So definitely keep it for informal settings between friends. And the rule of thumb I always use is, you know, if you hear somebody else say it first, then, you know, you feel more comfortable that you can use that with them. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to sort of lead with this. So I think that's an important point you make, Cassie, is that, you know, anytime you're learning new words, it's really important to know the context in which you would use them. If you're talking to someone from another country, they may not understand any of these words. So it's important that you understand the context and where you are and who you're talking to before you just kind to jump out saying, hey, que lo que, dame un chin, right? So, yeah. <laughs> so proceed with caution. But at least now you'll understand when you hear these um, words and phrases that, one, you're probably listening to a Dominican, <laughs> and two, you'll know what they're talking about and you won't feel left out of the conversation. So with that, we're going to wrap up this episode. We had a great conversation. Gracias, Kesia. De nada, fue un placer. Now, if you're interested in learning more Dominican Spanish, check out the Dominican Spanish 101 Bilingual Dictionary and Phrase Book. It includes over 200 words and expressions that are uniquely Dominican. And for all my podcast listeners, you know I'm always looking out for you guys. I have a 20% discount available if you want to get the phrase book and learn even more Dominican Spanish words. And the great thing about the phrase book also is not only do you get the words in Spanish with the definition in Spanish, you'll also get the translation to English and three different examples that are in context so that you understand exactly how the words are used in different situations. And you'll also be able to get the audio so you can hear exactly how every word and phrase is pronounced. So if you're interested in the Dominican Spanish 101 Bilingual Dictionary and Phrase Book, Go to the show notes page to access the discount code at learnspanishconsalsa.com forward slash Dominican words. That's learnspanishconsalsa.com forward slash Dominican words. And that's the show notes for this episode. So you'll be able to review all of the vocabulary that we went over in our conversation and also access your special discount for the phrase book. Now, I also mentioned earlier that we have a Dominican Spanish 101 audio course. So if you're interested in checking out the free trial of that course, so you can learn even more Dominican Spanish, go to dominicanspanish101.com forward slash free trial. And I'll also link that on the show notes page as well. So I hope you enjoyed this episode all about Dominican Spanish words and phrases. And as always, we'd love to hear from you. You can reach us on Instagram at Learn Spanish Con Salsa or leave us a comment on the show notes page. I hope you learned something in this episode that will take you one step closer from being a beginner to bilingual. Adios. Thank you for listening to the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast at LearnSpanishConSalsa.com. 